Look at that man. What is he trying to do? He's trying to break the rock completely. But is it possible to break a rock completely? Hi. So do you think rock can be broken completely? The idea that all matter is made of tiny indivisible particles is very old. It has taken us a long time to reach our present day idea of atomic models. The smallest unit of any element which carries all the properties of the element is called an atom. Atoms of an element are identical. Each element has different atoms. Matter as a whole is electrically neutral. Hence, it contains equal number of positive and negative charges in the atom. The description of the distribution of the mass and positive and negative charges in an atom is called an atomic model. Well, today we are going to learn a little bit more about these atoms and their structures. Now, let's discuss these models one by one. Let's start with Thomson's atomic model. In the year 1898, the great physicist J.J. Thomson proposed this model of atom known as Thomson's atomic model. According to this model, the atom diffuses positive charge and the electrons are randomly scattered throughout the atom similar to the seeds in a watermelon. This makes the atom electrically neutral. This model is also known as the plum pudding model. In the year 1903, the physicist Leonard, from his studies on the cathode rays, proposed a model of an atom known as Leonard's atomic model. He observed in his experiment that the atom must have a lot of empty space in it. According to this model, the atoms consist of electrons and similar tiny particles carrying positive charges. But the model could not give a clear idea about how the ions are held inside the atom or the stability and the mass of an atom. In the years 1906 to 1911, Ernest Rutherford carried out a series of experiments on scattering of alpha particles from gold foils to understand the structure of an atom. Alpha particle is a positively charged particle. Let us observe how these alpha particles behave when they approach the interior of an atom. Most of alpha particles like AA dash pass through the atom undeflected. Some of the particles like BB dash get scattered by the atom at smaller angles of deflections. The particles like CC dash undergo large deflections at an angle less than 180 degrees but more than 90 degrees. The particles like D get deflected or rebounded such that they are sent back as D dash with an angle of 180 degrees. Rutherford thought that the large angle deflection of the alpha particles requires strong forces to be acting on the particles. This would be possible only if all the positive charges and masses of atom are concentrated in a very small central region. He named it as nucleus. Rutherford calculated the radius of the nucleus and found it to be shorter than 2.4 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 15 m because the mass of electron is only about 1 7 thousandth of mass of an alpha particle so the effect of the presence of electron inside the atom can be neglected. From this experiment Rutherford postulated the atomic model as follows. 1. Atom consists of a central mass positively charged nucleus made up of positively charged protons. 2. Electrons are present outside the nucleus which revolve around it. 3. 
the space between the nucleus and the electron is largely empty. 4. The size of the atom is determined by the distribution of electrons around the nucleus. 5. The amount of protons present in the atom is exactly equal to the total amount of electrons present in the atom. Now the question that arises is how are electrons distributed outside the nucleus? This idea will lead us to the drawback of the Rutherford's atomic model. Rutherford proposed that the electrons revolve around the nucleus however according to the electromagnetic theory such circulations would radiate energy continuously. If this is so then electrons will gradually lose energy by circulating in circles of decreasing radii. After some time they will fall into the nucleus and the atom will collapse. However this does not happen and the atom is stable. Therefore, Rutherford's model cannot account for the stability of the atom. That is the drawback of this model. In the year 1912, another physicist, Niels Bohr, proposed a new model of atom which explains the stability of the atom. Bohr's atomic model can be described in three postulates. Let's take a look at them. First postulate. The electrons in an atom revolve around the nucleus in circular orbits just like planets revolve around the sun. Second postulate. The electrons revolve only in permitted orbits called stationary orbits and do not radiate energy while in such orbits. This postulate explains the stability of the atom. A stationary orbit is one in which the angular momentum of the electron is equal to an integral multiple of h by 2 pi where h is the Planck's constant. Therefore, the angular momentum L of the electron in a stationary orbit is L is equal to nh by 2 pi where n is equal to 1, 2, 3 or 4. This is equation 1. This is called Bohr's quantum condition. Third postulate, the electron has a definite energy in a stationary orbit. Whenever an electron jumps from one stationary orbit to another, absorption or emission of energy takes place. The absorption or emission of energy is equal to the difference in the energy of the two stationary orbits involved. The energy will be in the form of electromagnetic radiations. If the electron jumps from an orbit of energy E2 to E1, E2 is greater than E1, then the energy of radiation is given by E2 minus E1 is equal to H nu, which is emission that is equation 2. If the electron jumps from an orbit of energy E1 to E2, then the energy difference is given by E1 minus E2 which is equal to minus H nu which is absorption that is equation 3. Nu is the frequency of emitted or absorbed radiation. Equation 2 and 3 explain the spectral lines emitted by different elements. 